Hi everyone, Irene from Rainy Rocks here. Today I'm making a video showing you how I uh, made one of my 12 inch resin clocks for a client. She wanted a, wanted a clock in blues, grays, and silvers. So you'll see here that I have prepared my board uh, in advance. So I just laid down some acrylic paint, you know, randomly in dark and light blues and a little bit of white and, and uh, gray and then I just sat and figured out where I wanted my uh, gems to be and actually this is uh, crushed glass that I crushed myself when I bought the glass from the dollar store heated it up and um, just smashed it with a hammer just actually tapped them with a the hammer between the towel and there you go you have a cheaper alternative to buying gems and then you can color them too if you like uh, you know the blue was already you can buy most I think they come in um, the you know greens and blues and clear and that sort of thing but uh, you could always uh, you know crush the clear ones and then dye them in any color that you like really with uh, inks maybe acrylic paint but uh, anyway so here I am I'm just affixing my crushed glass to the board by drizzling resin over it and so now we're going to do start pouring so I don't like restricting myself with the lines I uh, just tend to go with the flow and how I'm feeling so here you'll see that I am uh, going to lay down my gray and I'm using dolphin dolphin by deco art and I'm just randomly spreading spreading it around and hoping for the best it usually works out you know I have thrown pieces away but I've learned that I shouldn't throw pieces away because you could always fix them by covering them up so I just spread that around a little bit and now I'm going to add um, indigo night by folk art and I've added very little to this so it can just be it's translucent and we'll just spread it around just and I just kind of use my gem my gem lines as a reference and now I think I have um, what am I using here? Oh yes, my Prussian blue by Amsterdam. Now, this is like this is my favorite color, and in this I've actually mixed in um, uh, aquamarine mica. So the gray and the indigo night did not have mica in it, but my Prussian blue does. Blue does. So I'm just spreading it around. And like I said, Prussian Blue is by Amsterdam is my favorite by far. I love how it can um, be so dark, almost black, but then just, you know, and then it turns into this. Uh, you'll see at the end of this, it's, it's just a gorgeous color in my opinion. Right, so there, just spread it around. So now I am using uh, some deep turquoise by deco art americana and there is no mica and this, this is just acrylic paint and just randomly placing the colors around again now at this point i remember thinking oh i hope this turns out well you know it's almost like an, i like i i don't see it it's, just, it's really funny i find that i'm not actually looking at it so much i just kind of go it's really weird. I caught myself doing this the other day when I made this. I wasn't really looking at the piece. I was just applying these colors and thinking about something else. <laughs> Anyhow, so now I here I am using black diamond silver. Excuse me, silver pearl, and I've added in two drops of the casting craft white. And I thought I'd try that out and see if I get any any different effects. It's always fun to try different things. So you'll see here, I'm just spreading that around. 
you want to have that contrast. At least I like to have some contrast, not just, you know, just be all one color or just a little bit of white around the glass there. Okay. Scrape out the last bit of that silver. It looks white here, but it's actually when it dries, it turns and dries into this beautiful silver. I really like uh, black diamonds, micas. Okay, so now that we have all the colors put down, it's time to wake up the mica. I'll go grab my heat gun, my best friend. Well. Wow. And just slowly heat up the resin there. Get some movement going. Try not to, uh, I don't hold it too close to the board because believe me, I've burnt mica, or excuse me, resin many, many times. And so here we'll just spread it out and let the magic happen. So now I'm going to spread that white, or sorry, that silver over the dark, and you'll see what, what's going to happen here. Let's spread out that silver a little bit on that, on that end. It's, uh, and then now I just push the blue over the white. And then you'll see the lacing. Isn't that lacing just absolutely amazing? Just love that. I don't, it's just gorgeous. Okay, I think we'll just need a little bit of movement there. Okay, so now it is the following day and the board, the resin has dried and you'll see I have a little scratch uh, patches there where I've sanded because I found little floaties. So that's fine. I just um, sanded off, sanded them off and now uh, we're ready to go to the second stage. So I'm just applying some glitter here to my stones or excuse me to my glass and it's actually a folk art glitterific. Um, uh, I thought I would try it. I actually put it in, I put a little, little bit of this uh, glitter into uh, some resin, but it marshmallowed on me. And I was like, okay, I'm glad I didn't uh, waste a lot of it. So I just, I just uh, directly applied it. So, you know, just to add a little bit of bling and sparkle to the glass. And there it is, glitterific. I will put a description of all the products that I used in the uh, in the description box. So I'm just about done doing that. And then I found uh, I have I found some silver chunky glitter at the from the from the dollar my local Dollarama. It's usually where I get all of my glitter from. And I, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to just get a whole bunch of different colors, chunky, fine, super fine, and then I mix them up and I make uh, I make my own colors, and it's fun. So here, you guys see, like I said, I am using my chunky silvery glitter and adding it to the, the clear stones.
mean my camera is doing this really kind of a neat effect actually at first it was making a little bit dizzy but every time I, I have this uh the board on a lazy on a lazy susan that i've covered in a a small garbage bag but uh it's not turning properly. I guess the bag is bunching down on the bottom and stopping the Lazy Susan from turning fully, but um, that's okay. It still worked to some degree. All right, so I've placed that, my chunky glitter. Oh, a little bit of a problem there. I'm getting frustrated now, I can tell. <laughs> So after this, I'm going to apply the lines. So what I've done is I have, uh, I got some glitter that I, uh, how I don't, I guess it would be like a, a it had, it's a charcoal-y, charcoal in color and it had some blue fine glitter mixed in with it. And, um, but what I did was so I took that and I mixed in some silver glitter and a little bit more of a chunky glitter. And I mix that all up and then I put in this little bottle that I have here, which I find really handy and to make my lines with. And now I'm just randomly tracing out lines. Kind of, you want to go with the flow with how, when, you, when you're blowing out your, your, uh, your resin, your micas, you don't want to go directly with the lines you want to leave some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You want to leave some sort of, uh, you don't want to follow the lines directly. Just because, you know, nature is not perfect. And there's never a straight line, really. So you see little squiggles here and there. I definitely don't want to cover up the lacing. And I'm trying to make my lines as thin as thinner because I tend to like the thinner lines. But, uh, so here I am just uh, trying to figure out where to add more lines, walking around like a crazy woman. Back and forth. There I go again. I don't think it needs anything there. Oh, maybe. Here we go. In there. Oh, there goes Buster. <laughs> and I think we are good with lines. I may decide to. Well, there's the little. Put a little line on there. And what's going to happen after this is once I decide, once I decide to stop, I will maybe like see if I clean up some of the lines, maybe move, you know, take some out, change the pattern. And the good thing about this is that I can, because my resin, the, it's, it's dry. The first stage is dry. So now I just, if I want to change something, I just take a baby wipe and I can just uh, quickly rub it off, wipe it off, and uh, I can reapply glitter however I want. Here I go. I didn't like that. It just didn't look natural enough for me. Let me just quickly rub that off. Wipe that off. See how easy it is? You know, it takes longer to do pieces uh, like this in stages, but it's worth it. Make sure you you know you wipe it clean.
It looks like I'm just about running out of glitter there. And in all honesty, I can't even tell you how much glitter I mixed up. Because at this for this part of the at this stage, it's only we're only applying the uh, glitter lines, and then we're just gonna let it dry until the following day. And I have to wait another full day at work to come back and do what I love to do. <laughs> Yeah, just touching it up there a little bit. Let's make sure I don't have any stray streaks. And there we go. Okay, so that's the following day. Oh no, it's not. Sorry. This is what happens when you do a voiceover or a video. And it's my first time, so bear with me. I'm very nervous right now. I, I promise I'll get better at this, but, uh, you know, very extremely nervous. So, so I'm apologizing. To, I apologize if I'm babbling. <laughs> or maybe not speaking clearly. But uh, I guess the first time is always the hardest. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just thinning out my lines here. I don't, uh, I don't like thick lines. At least not for this one. I didn't want to cover up too much of what was actually happening in terms of the design I didn't want to cover up a lot of the lacing which I didn't win the dark portion but I did on the um, bottom portion down there where, where you see my finger sliding across Now I have officially run out of glitter, so I'll just scrape it out of the bottle. And I actually love that bottle. First I tried syringes, didn't really work for me. I just, this bottle, I can use it, reuse it over and over again. I just empty it out, you know, with a popsicle stick as much as I can. Make sure that the actual, um, I don't know what you want to call that, the, the uh, spout or whatever is clear. And then you can just fill it up again with whatever resin you're using after it's dried. And you, you know, you can use it over and over again until it fills up. And that would literally take forever. And that's what I do with my cups too. I reuse my cups all the time. I just let them dry. But now I have ordered a uh, silicone cup. So I'm really excited. I'm just waiting for my order to come in. And some new molds. Coaster molds. Okay, so here we are the following day. My glitter lines are all dry. And now we are going to outline them. And I think for me, it just it just uh, adds a professional touch to it. Normally, I, uh, you know, I was thinking about using my um, a paint, but I don't know. I wasn't really feeling it today. I had a tough day of work. I felt tired. And I had to kind of get this done for the client for before Mother's Day. And so here we are. I'm using a silver paint pen, which works just as fine. And, you know, uh, yes, I am making mistakes. The point is, is not to, um, it's just to continue the flow, not to lift it up. So you don't get those little stop and start marks, you know, so, which I am not following my own rules, but that's okay. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit here. Let's cover them up. Or I mean, not cover them up, but outline uh, my glitter lines. You can't really see it that well in the, uh, the silver portion of, um, 
Okay, but once you get to the blues, well, up close on this video, you can't, but you see, it's, it, just, it just, just adds, you know, and people notice these things too. Your clients will notice these, you will notice that you took the time and to um, give them a quality piece. I'm just thinking it's actually looking very, 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 very nice right now. I'm loving it. And I'm pretty sure the client will love it as well. Here I'm using a glass uh, cloth that, uh, for glass because um, it won't leave lint and stuff. And I have I like just using a little bit of acetate or nail polish remover to take off the uh, marker, the paint, wherever I've made mistakes. Okay, I think we're just about done here. See, I just, if you can see there right now where I'm drawing you against the dark blue, it just kind of just finishes it off and it just makes the piece just look so much nicer, in my opinion. Okay, so this is about 10 minutes later. Now we're going to do the flood coat. So uh, here I've mixed about 100 milliliters of resin. And now I'm just first drizzling, covering up my uh, glass areas with the, with the glass pieces. Make sure I'm evenly coated. And now we're just going to place it on the rest of the board. And once this dries, I'll find my uh, middle point, drill a hole in, install my clock hardware, my hand, the hands, and it's good to go. And you'll see that rough patch now, how it's been covered up with the resin, and it looks like new again. Just make sure you evenly spread out your resin. Now we'll take a heat gun to pop any bubbles. Supersonic speed. Well, not quite supersonic, but close enough. <laughs> and 
And there you go. And I just quickly cover it up before any more fluff gets on there. And wait until the following day when I get back home from work. Oh, sorry, forgot. I actually sprinkled some diamond dust just on the glass, not on the, uh, the rest of the board, because I've made that mistake before. It doesn't actually sink into the glass, so you, or excuse me, into the resin. And so um, you can, when you're looking at it, you can see like the glass just kind of floats on top and it doesn't look good. But because I'm just sprinkling it on the crushed glass, it's fine. But I wouldn't uh, ever attempt to sprinkle it on fresh resin that's on a surface, right? On a flat surface. It doesn't look right. Okay, I think we're done here. Now we'll just stay tuned. For the reveal. Here it is. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please like it and subscribe to my channel. I have many more projects that are that I am doing. And thank you for all your support. Have a great day. Bye.